this lady Fatima al Ma'suba, salam Allahi alayha. Imam al Rabba alayhi salam was summoned to go to Khurasan, and he left Khurasan. She could not live in Medina without her brother. She loved him so much. So she decided to join him. Out of her love to her brother, the Imam al Rabba, salam alayhi. Now, some people might argue, well, she could have stayed in Medina. Why bother? To be with the Ma'soom, to be with the Imam, to be with the one whom you love. She loved her brother. Her brother raised her. But she loved him not only because he's her brother, because he is her Imam. Her imam. Isa alayhi salam, the Prophet says to his companions, Sahibu, be a companion with one whom when you look at him, he'll remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he speaks, he increases in your knowledge. And when you see him acting, you know, just doing whatever he does routinely. He will entice you towards akhirah, encourage you to do the uh, to go for the akhirah. These are three conditions. One, when you look at the individual, his looks will take you towards Allah, will remind you of Allah. Second is his speech, the way he talks, and third is his actions. If being among someone like this entices an individual towards Allah. Imagine being with the Imam, salam Allah alayhi, in the presence of the Imam. To be with them is something blessing, blessing. And that's why attending their majalis is also a big blessing, big blessing. She could not live without her brother, so she decides to join him. Apparently 17 members of Bani Hashim go with her towards Mashhad or Khurasan. Some reports suggest that Ma'amun heard about this caravan that has taken place. Every stop they made, it drew people towards them. This is the caravan of Rasulullah sallallahu the children of Rasulullah, so people were drawn. So they achieved some popularity, some respect. Interestingly, they also went by the city of Qom, or close by the city of Qom. The city of Qom consisted of Shia. That's why when Imam Rida was taken to Khurasan, Ma'mun said not to take him through Qom. Other routes, where there are not many Shia. Safer routes. When Ma'mun heard that those people, this caravan is carrying a lot of interest, popularity. He was threatened. So some reports suggest that he sent an army to attack them. They attacked them and they killed them all except the lady, Fatima salam Allahi alayha, who some say that she may have been even poisoned. She may have been even poisoned. If not poisoned, the tragedy of the loss of 17 of her members was too much for her. So she headed towards Qom, the nearest city to her. The people of Qom, when they heard that she is coming, they of course went to her, welcomed her, and she stayed in someone's house, but did not last for too long. A few days and then she left this dunya. The news then reached Imam al rabba salamullahi alayhi, who was very saddened for the loss of his sister, his beloved sister. Very saddened. And he said the famous hadith, Man zaraha arifan haqqaha wajabat lahul janna aw falahul janna. Anyone who visits her, recognizing her status, then he would achieve janna. And we read in her ziyara again, we say, Ya Fatima, ishfa'ili and Allah, fa inna laki and Allah sha'nan min sha'n. Ya Fatima, do shafa'a for me before Allah. For indeed, you have a status before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Status. 
This lady sacrificed her life for the sake of her brother. She rushed towards him. And Allah honored her with this great status. The name of Al-Ma'suma was given to her by the Imam Salamullahi Alayhi. They gave her this title, so she became known as Fatima Al-Ma'suma. It is narrated in the stories, the father of Ayatollah Mar'ashi Najafi, his father. He had written a book about Sayyids, the genealogy of Sayyids. It is said he prayed for 40 days or 40 nights to Allah to show him the qabr of Fatima al-Zahra sallallahu alayha. He wanted to know the qabr of his grandmother. 40 nights. On the 40th night, he saw in his dream Imam al-Sadiq sallallahu wa sallam alayhi. He told him what do you want? He said, I want to know where is the grave of my grandmother, Fatima, salam Allahi alayha. Tell me. He said, that I cannot tell you because the permission has not been granted yet. Permission is not granted. But you want to achieve her, the status of the ziyara of my grandmother, Fatima, you go to Fatima al maqsuma in Paul. You go to her, visit her. That's why it is narrated that he decided to move from Najaf. His son is narrating this. The Mar Ayatollah Mar'ashi Najafi himself, who now has a big library in the city of Qom. He narrates it. He said, that's why my father, when I was little, he told us we're moving to Qom from Najaf. And we moved over there. This lady, Allah has blessed her with shafa'a, barakah. And tonight, many of us have hajat. Many of us. And this lady will do shafa'a, insha'Allah. But brothers and sisters, we also need to put in the effort to demonstrate our love to Ahlul Bayt alayhim as by attending their majalis, doing whatever is within our means and ability to achieve their love, to achieve their Shafa'a, insha'Allah. And believe me, they don't expect much of us. Wallah, they're so kind, so merciful. Rahma lil alameen. Just a little bit of effort. She leaves this dunya, salamullahi alayha, at a young age of 28 years. Imam al-Ridha, alayhi salam, cries. He feels the pain of her loss. I say, Ibn Rasulillah, it is narrated that as they were trying to do the ghusl and the kafan to her, they saw a man coming on a horse. He approached. They did not know who he was. He came down. He did the ghusl. He did the kafan. He buried her. And he went. Some say it may have been Imam al-Rida sallallahu alayhi He attended the burial and the funeral of his sister. I say to him, Ya Rasulillah, you attended to your sister, took care of her. But who was for Zainab sallallahu alayhi on the eve of the 11th of Muharrah? She was all alone, crying for help. But she would not have anyone to help her. She went on to a hill known as Tallu She stood on that hill crying. Aywa abataya, aywa aliya. O oh my father, Ya Amir al muminin come and take a look at your son, Abi Abdullah al Hussein. O Lalon in Karbala, 